All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the way that I like to sharpen uh, my Winsole Woodsman broadheads that I shoot in my longbow and in my recurve. There's occasions when I'll shoot um, a single bevel like this Grizzly, but they're both the same weight. So it's 125 grain that I've hot melt inserted a 100 grain steel um, screw on adapter. That makes both of these broadheads 225 grains um, when I get ready. And then I shoot, I, I, I shoot everything to set up to tune with these. I like, you can tell, I like the long skinny design. These are basically the same exact profile. One's in a two blade single bevel and, um, and one's in a three blade. And I won't go into my opinion on, on the single bevel stuff too much um, for blood trails and things like that um, because these have a knock on them as well for leaving bad blood trails, so do these. But um, essentially, the sharpest broadhead you can put through an animal is the best broadhead. Um, on my single bevels, I get these shaved and sharp and uh, I get them throwing a burr and then I actually sharpen the other side. I'm not putting a bevel on it. I'm not, I'm not coming in and reprofiling it, but I get this a mirror, mirror shine. And then I hit this just a few times on such a, on such a low angle that I'm not, I'm not reprofiling it. I'm just looking for sharpness. Um, but, uh, but anyways, this is, this video is about this broadhead right here. So, the reason people get bad blood trails out of these, out of the Montec, Montec, when it came out, it just blew everything away because it would fly so good. Um, but people, and I shot them, I shot them for two seasons, blowing through stuff, shooting pigs, where I used to live at, I had a, I could feed pigs behind my house and put a light up, and I could be sitting there watching TV and pigs would come in, I could get up off the couch and go fling arrows at them. I had pigs just, and I used that to do research, you know, and, and the more pigs I shot and the more I blood trailed them, things like that, um, it caused me to go away from those Montecs. And then recently when I started getting back into traditional, um, I shot a couple things with a single bevel and you know, it, it was the whole nine yards. It was loaded up on the front end with all this FOC. It, it was that plus the insert plus, you know, stiff spine air. I was shooting this setup that was a, um, a mathematical setup more than a, than a real world experience setup. In my real world experience, um, I'm getting better blood and out of a medium weight setup. I stay around 500 grains now. I, I built that other setup, it was like 800 grains or something like that. Um, but I scaled back, I built about a 500 grain arrow and I shot some stuff last year and got just like amazing results. But I changed one thing and that is, I went from sharpening these broadheads on a flat surface to I started sharpening them on this big pot that I've got. I used to use a trash can, and um, and before that I used a five gallon bucket. I keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If I could find something bigger, bigger than this, I would, because I just want it to be barely, barely have a crown to it. Because what I'm gonna do essentially is put a hollow grind on this edge. And I'll talk about it more in a second, but I wanna go over the, the process. So, I start with 220, and then after 220, I go to 400. I don't go much sharper than 400 because I like it to have that micro little burr. Uh, I wish I could find a round file. I love the feel of a, that, a, that a file edge leaves on here. But, um, but anyway, so just for cutting through flesh, I'm not talking about for doing a test where you show that it can shave. I'm talking about for for tearing through flesh and hemorrhaging and causing bleeding. So get a big round surface like this pot. This is what I use, this is my, my crawfish pot. I add something to it. So I'll put, you can, you can use water. Uh, I can't find my little water, my little squirt bottle of water. 
So get this on your surface, right? And me, I get it situated with my feet. When I'm reprofiling it, I'm just going back and forth. When you look at your Sharpie, check this bevel. You might want to adjust where you pinch this and where you hold it and turn it. So you're gonna do that on every side and that's going to take this. So right now, these are all 60 degrees divided by two. They've got a 30 degree steep angle. That's not good for, that's what you want on a hatchet. That's not what you want on a slicing tool. Um, so you're gonna bring this down and I don't know what you're taking it to. It'd be a, it'd be a math problem. Probably good for your eighth grader or ninth grade kid you got in your house. It'd be a math problem to figure out what, what you're reprofiling this to in a hollow grind based on the circumference of what you're using. I just know you don't wanna use something tiny and small cause you'll never, you'll take too much metal off. The bigger an object, the bigger a round item that's perfectly round and perfectly smooth underneath here. You don't want anything underneath there. This is perfectly smooth. But the bigger an item you can use, the better off. Like I said, I started with a five gallon bucket and I just keep getting bigger. Everything, every, every time I see something bigger, um, I've gone to bigger and bigger and bigger. So you'll also, this tip, this tip's reinforced. These are easier to reprofile than this tip. You're probably never gonna get that tip to look, have that concave look like you want. But what you're looking at, you're looking at these parts right here. And then when all the Sharpie's gone, go to your 400. So do all the profiling work with the 220. Do the honing work on the 400. So I'll go back and forth for a little bit until I feel it get real smooth. And when it gets real smooth, then I just pull my strokes that way. And you can see, I don't know if you can see the light reflecting, you can see it's just getting, I mean, it is a mirror, mirror finish. And that right there is dangerous sharp. I mean, you just sit there and shave hair. Um, but anyways, so it's hot out here. I'm in my messy garage. I'm gonna go inside and I'll, uh, I'll do a little, I'll, sh I'll show you more what I'm talking about, the edge and the sharpness uh, inside. I'm gonna ride on here. So this is the, the, the way that it's, this is probably what's on it. So this would be a 30 degree and a 30 degree. You're gonna take and curve that, you're gonna put a hollow grind on that edge. So they're now, they're gonna have a thinner, they're gonna have a better slicing profile than like a, a 
you know, a 30 degree profile, which is like you want on a working tool. So instead of being like an ax edge, it's gonna be like a razor blade edge. You hear people talk about hollow ground. Well, you can use a, you've gotta use a round, you gotta use something round to get hollow ground. You can't um, just take something like this and flatten it over a flat surface um, like you do with the Stay Sharp. That's just gonna put a flat edge. And I want a 20 degree, I, so I'm shooting for 20 on, on everything. Um, you know, so on my other broadheads, so say that's the edge, that's 30 degree. That's what, that's what you're putting on it when you put a three blade on a flat surface. This is what you've got when you're shooting like a, a replaceable blade, like a muzzy. Those little thin blades and you can replace them and you throw them away, they come in packs. That's what you're shooting. You're shooting like a 15 or a 20 on replaceable blade broadheads. And when you're taking a three blade like a Montec or a Winsel Woodsman and you put it on a flat surface, it's 60 degrees on every side. And half of that is your 30 degree angle on either side of the blade. So don't, don't shoot a, a, a tool edge, like a machete edge, on a broadhead, it's not going to bleed good. That's that's why that's why people take them and and throw them in the trash and say, "Man, I shot a deer with that thing, and if I wouldn't have saw the deer drop, I would have never found it." Well, that's because the, they just bleed crappy. Um, they bleed so that they, they, you're not getting good blood trails. The, and I won't go into the other cast broadheads like cast stainless. Um, that's a whole nother whole nother animal. You want a broadhead that's welded out of carbon steel. Uh, it's fusion welded or something like a woodsman, or uh, it's a, it's machined out of a solid piece of bar stock. You don't want um, broadheads that are made out of cast metal. Um, it's just like, it, it's the difference between um, like a piece of steel bar stock versus a cast iron skillet. And you see how porous and brittle cast objects are. So the cast broadheads, stay away from them. If you're gonna shoot the Montex, or if you've already invested and you've got a ton of Montex, try this before you throw them away. I guarantee you, if you can get, a, 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 if you can get and reprofile that edge to a hollow grind from what you're doing right now, if you can take it on a surface like I just showed you and take it on a bucket or a, um, Everybody, you got something in your house, or tra your kitchen trash can or whatever, just borrow it for five minutes, get some, some wet, dry sandpaper, and reprofile some of those three-blade broadheads. And I promise, the next thing you shoot, you're going to notice a difference in the blood trail. You're going to notice a difference in, in um, also the blood clotting up. Making a, making a, cleaner, a, a cleaner cut through tissue... Uh, there's a lot of reasons medically you want to make a real clean slice. If you cut yourself shaving with a razor blade and that thing's got a probably 15 degree bevel on it, uh, um, it won't stay sharp for long. You have to keep throwing them away and replacing them. But the first time you cut yourself, because you're going to sharpen this every time you shoot it through the, an animal or shoot in the dirt. It's a one-time use. So don't worry. Don't be too bashful about getting and reprofiling it and getting down on a razor's edge and having a razor uh, and having a razor fine bevel on your broadheads because you're gonna, it's one and done. It's not ethical to be out here shooting your broadhead through five or six different animals without sharpening it or any reprofiling or anything like that, knocking the nicks off of it. I don't care if you think when you shoot it through something that sticks in the dirt and you pick it up and you say, wow, man, that thing's still sharp. Um, it's not the same. It's not the same do do what's right and do what's ethical and go ahead and 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 put another razor sharp mirror finish on it and um you're gonna be recovering more stuff because that's that's what i'm into i'm into uh, making a good shot and making a good short recovery more so than i'm into having just uh you know if somebody said that you could kill a, an eight point that was legal and he was going to run 50 yards and die immediately. And there's just going to be blood everywhere. I would say, give me that over 
shooting a broadhead back and hitting a deer in the guts and he run off and you don't find him and you wait have to wait a week and buzzers find him and you say man i got this big you know uh this big 200 inch trophy but uh but the cape's no good because he rotted in the sun and I, didn't, I never did find him and i made a bad hit no i'm into quick clean kills and um and broadheads that hit where you're aiming and so that's the other thing. Don't shoot a broadhead if you can't shoot it accurately. It doesn't matter how sharp it is or how, if it's gonna leave a three inch cut or four inch cut or whatever. I mean, everything just keeps getting more and more ridiculous. Um, these, these, a lot of these broadheads I shoot have just a little over an inch or I've, I shoot, those woodsmen have, have, around, have around a one inch cut. One inch cut, um, it's profiled a lot longer. It has a lot of cutting surface, but it, it doesn't have a big, um, it, it's not claiming to cut a big hole and that, that there's benefit to all that, that blade you're putting through them. Um, because when you push that hide, you're not going to get a one inch hole out of, even though it says it's a one inch diameter, it pushes that hide. And then the hide, when it comes back down that, that long skinny blade, there's something to it. It, um, and it cuts a big old hole in them. And, you know, I shoot double bevels. I shoot the single bevels and here, here recently, since I started using a, a big, a big pot like that, since I started using a big round surface to reprofile them, um, I don't know if I'll ever go back. I mean, I'm just like re, re fell in love with the three blade broadheads and how, just how much blood they leave. And, um, I, I even shot through a pig last year and people say, oh, the tip curls on them. When you get a long skinny, you need to make a chisel point. I don't do any of that because last year I shot, I broke a rib going in, it broke a rib coming out, and then it hit the big, biggest leg bone in a hog's leg and just broke it, shattered it. And the tip had a little burr on it. I Put it on a thing. So as soon as I started reprofiling, a little burr went away, and it's got a needle tip again. So I don't know. I'm not shooting into bone on purpose or planning to hit bone. Or these guys that advocate for the uh, the single bevels and the crazy weight and stuff like that. They're saying, well, these accidental hits are going to happen and all that stuff. But uh, you know, I hit two ribs and a leg bone, and I wasn't set up for some bone crushing. Um, elephant setup it was just a same thing i shoot everything with i would take my my recurve or my longbow setup with that uh, winsel woodsman and uh aluminum arrows i think this year i'm gonna shoot carbon arrows they're the same weight but uh i'd, I'd take that anywhere i'd shoot elk with that in colorado if i had to but um, the point is i wanted to make this video just to show how i sharpen my woodsman broadheads and uh and I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think there's a company coming out with a, uh, the company that makes these little things, I think they're coming out with a three blade sharpener. I'm not sure. It's, um, it's the same concept. It's got a curved surface that you're putting your sandpaper on and it's going to reprofile those inside edges. So when you're, when you're doing that, you're getting two blades at the same time. You're reprofiling. Uh, both blades every time you turn it. So you make three turns, you pick up all six angles um, and all six sides and you're going to reprofile them. But uh, anyways, that's just how I sharpen them. And that's just been my experience um, shooting deer and hogs here in East Texas. Um, that's not, I haven't been all over the world and shot the North American 29 big game species or anything, but I've shot a bunch of pigs. I get a lot of opportunity to test broadheads and test setups and uh, I think that that um, if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot a three blade, and if you're gonna sharpen it uh, on a flat surface, try just try at least do one of them, reprofile it, and shoot it through an animal, and just see the difference. And I'm telling you, you're gonna see more blood on the ground. Um, it's not gonna make it fly any better. You still gotta make a good shot, but it's you're gonna notice more blood on the ground. So, anyways. Um, that's just my two cents. Thanks.